Hi, this is Jennifer Gonzalez for Cult of Pedagogy. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a teaching configuration called the in-class flip. The pattern for a traditional flipped classroom goes like this. Instead of using lots of valuable class time delivering content to students, then having students apply that learning at home, you flip that arrangement. Pre-recording the direct instruction and having students watch it at home, then doing the application part, what we typically think of as homework, in class. This arrangement is great when all your students have good home access to technology, but if they don't, the flip can fall apart. And access isn't the only problem. Some homes aren't conducive to the kind of learning that a traditional flip requires. Although districts are working on creative solutions to address these challenges, an in-class flip provides another alternative. Whereas a traditional flip depends heavily on things going right at home, the in-class flip keeps all parts of the flip at school, thus assuring that more students get the benefits of the flipped concept. Here's how it works. Suppose you teach Spanish. This week, you're ready to introduce the difference between the verbs ser and estar. So, just like in a regular flipped classroom, you record a short lecture on this concept. Now, instead of having students watch this video at home, the video becomes one station in your class. So suppose you have about six devices in your classroom for this kind of station. That takes care of one group of six. If you have 30 students, we need good quality stations for the rest of them. Since this is a foreign language class, another station can be a memory game using vocabulary that's already been learned, along with a few new words and a dictionary to look them up. That takes care of six more students. Notice that this is a game that can be played over and over. It's good to have a few stations like this, since others may require students to go longer than planned, and an infinite station like this one can absorb some of that extra time without students getting antsy. In another station, students could work in pairs, reading a skit that makes heavy use of the verbs ser and estar. For students who have already watched the video, this will reinforce what they learned. For those who have not, it'll act as an anticipatory set building curiosity about those two words. Just like with the previous station, this activity can be done over and over if needed. Students can switch partners or roles if they get restless. Another station could be a standalone activity, like a cultural or craft lesson, like making cascarones. It's important that activities like this be quick and simple, taking no more time than any other station. Do one yourself ahead of time to estimate the duration. Another station could be a basket of clothes and household objects, along with a set of cards that give Spanish instructions for dressing up and acting out short scenarios. So where is the teacher all this time? This is what makes this a flip, rather than just station work. Because the teacher has pre-recorded the lecture portion of the lesson, he is now free to interact with students at the other stations, correcting their misconceptions, answering any questions they might have, but never having to re-deliver the lesson itself. So right now, you'd have exactly the right number of stations for your students. But notice that none of these really builds on the learning that took place in the video station. And if you've ever done stations before, you know that it helps a lot to have at least one extra station to keep things from backing up. So let's add one more. This one will have focused written work that builds on the material learned in the viewing station. Notice that right now, this is left empty. Because students need to watch the video before doing this station, it should be left empty in the first round. To help organize things, go ahead and number your stations. Notice that I made the empty station last and the video viewing station second to last. So get students started at their first station and after a set amount of time, have them rotate to the next station. Once students start rotating here to station six, this is where you'll spend most of your time to make sure the concepts from the video are being applied correctly. So the rotation would continue in this direction. As students move through the station, some irregularities may develop. One student will need to repeat the video, or a late arriving student will need to be worked into the rotation. Stations are ideal for this kind of differentiation as long as you plan for it. To keep things running smoothly, have a final independent activity like silent reading for students to do when they're completely finished with all stations. Or assign leadership roles for students who finish quickly, the dealer at the card game, the scenario reader at the dress-up station, or an assistant at the cascaroni table. If you teach in a self-contained classroom or have extended class periods, an in-class flip could take place in one day, 
maybe taking about 90 minutes or so, depending on the kind and number of stations you set up. If you teach many groups in shorter periods of time, keep your stations set up over a few days or even a week, with the goal that students will finish them all by the end of a set period of time. I hope the in-class flip offers you a new option for using technology in your teaching. Thanks for watching and have a great day.